Have you ever been frustrated? But I'm not talking frustrated like what kind of t-shirt to select in the morning. Some guys already found a good solution for that. I'm talking about like developer frustrated. Have you ever integrated a library and it doesn't work? Or you learned a new Android API, but API and it's not documented. Or you host your open source project, your like, small babies in the GitHub, and suddenly it's purchased by Microsoft. I'm talking about this kind of frustration that developers face every day. And unfortunately, or fortunately, we have to live with it. And today, I am going to talk about what happens if frustration turns into the myth. Because if something is behaving not in the way we expect, something is behaving not in the way it's recommended, it often turns to the misses, and we try to avoid them. Like, raise your hand, who is committing code to production on Friday? You see, nobody. Like, there are a few brave people in this audience. We are afraid of misses. And today, I want to debunk some of them, and particularly about deep links, because I'm working with deep linking for quite some time, and I found that people have some misunderstandings, some People are afraid to use them or don't use the full power of what deep linking can provide to us. So let's start. But before that, who the hell am I and why I'm here on the stage in front of you? My name is Vitaly Zasadny, and my journey with mobile development started like back in 2000-something when the Nexus One was presented. When I saw the first promotion of Nexus One, I, just, I fall in love with this phone. It's like, Oh my god, I want to write applications for that device. And this law slowly start, turned to the Google developer group that I started back in my city. And I truly believe that only when you share your knowledge, the learnings from your journey in mobile industry, then the whole industry is going to benefit. And that's the best way to learn. That's why I'm speaking a lot. You can see me on Droid cons, on different kind of com uh, presentations and uh, conferences. And now, at my main job, I'm leading mobile department at the company called GetSocial. We are a Dutch-based startup, and we build tools to help mobile developers to organically acquire users and engage them to make them stay into the, in their application. Like if you think about that, we build something like Uber has referral campaigns, invite a friend, get 20 euros, or white label social network to give people a way to communicate inside the application and give them more reasons to get back to your application. But I'm not going to talk about that today. I'm going to talk about deep links. And that's not a product that we develop, but we heavily rely on that because deep links provide its essential technology to build referral campaigns and to drive users into the social network that we are leveraging later on. And we have our library, our SDK available for all patterns, so I have a nice overview of how Android is working with deep links, which what we are going to talk mostly about today, and same for iOS and web. But before we're going to get problems and misses, let's get back to the history a bit, where it all actually started. Funny or not, the first time the deep links were mentioned, it was in courts, back in 2006 concept of deep linking had a bit different meaning. Search engines were just like gaining and gaining more and more power, and content companies like New York Times were not sure if like, putting a link directly to the content on New York Times website is fine on Google, especially monetize that later. So they, there were a lot of loud court cases and media picked it up, so that's how deep linking became a common term. And the first time deep linking were used as we use it now for mobile deep linking, was in 2008, where iOS 2 was released. And iOS 2 was the first mobile platform that had a technical support for deep link, but at that time, 2008, you remember that like, applications of that time, they were like very basic, nobody again really cared about deep linking, nobody really needed and used it. Maybe some companies who had a lot of content, like same New York Times, they could link users from the website directly into the mobile application if it was installed. But if you are not content company, if you are not New York Times, most likely you didn't hear or didn't use deep links at that time. And then the big boom happened. Okay, okay. before that, 
uh, Google announced that first instance of app to app linking. If before that it was mostly web to app, like New York Times from, web, web, from the website to the mobile applications, on Google I.O. 2012, Google for the first time showed off how with deep links you can connect two applications. They did an integration between Google Plus and Pulse News. And you were able to share article from Pulse News to Google Plus, click on the, that article in the uh, Google Plus feed, and get back to the Pulse News apps without any web in between, and very nice user experience. That was the first instance of up to up deep linking. But the boom actually happened in 2013. At that time, a lot of companies invested millions and millions into mobile apps to develop, like big e-commerce apps, especially. They finally found that users that are using mobile application comparing to the website are staying in the application longer, they look through more products, and they convert more. Users who were using mobile applications were ha having like two to three times more conversions, more purchases in their application, which is huge. So everybody started driving their traffic from web to mobile, because that's the place where you can keep users longer and monetize them better. And at that time, the main way, like the only way you could drive users, like deep link users directly into the mobile application were URI schemes. I believe if you're an Android developer, you all added, like at some point of your life, links to your application with like markets, dot, dot, slash, slash, and, and your idea of the application. But the problem with URL schemes is that first, you cannot tie the URL scheme to your application. Because you don't owe the scheme itself, anybody could register to open that scheme. And if you try to open Reddit link on your phone, most likely you will get a like, whole bunch of applications that could ha handle that. And if you are a Reddit developer, you don't want to users to browse your content through different applications, because that's not the place where you can monetize users. So first problem was that even you had a chance, you had an option how to deep link users to the applications, you cannot guarantee that users will get to your to official application. And second problem was there were no a single standard. Even inside one single company, there was often a case that on one platform you had one for format of deep link, and on, an on the other platform the format was completely different. And if you as a marketer wanted to send a promotion in the email to like millions of your users, which of those two links you are going to put under the button in the email campaign? That kind of problems that were happening in 2013, 2014. Luckily, Google and Apple realized the problem quite pretty fast, and in 2015, they introduced a standard way for deep linking. First, they introduced app links and uh, app links on Android and universal links on iOS. And that's where basically web links that we used to. They solved the first problem that everybody was facing. We all knew how to use web, the basic web links. It was like the standard from 80s since the internet was alive. Every, that was a standard now, not only for web, but also for mobile. And second problem, they allowed you as an application developer to tight this URL to your application to verify that if you owe this domain, the application will be opened directly from this link. If you ever integrated deep links or app links on Android or universal links on iOS, that's asset links verification file. So with asset links, Google and Apple sold those two main pain points. But that's not the end. And Starting from 2015 and slowly it's moving on now, deep links evolved and solved one more problem. And if you are integrating it at least once, you probably saw it. You faced that. If the application is installed, you configure your deep link, everything works fine. User clicks on the link, we get to the application, write to the content, we get the data. Our life is brilliant and simple. But what if you don't have application installed? In a best case scenario, if your content is available in the application and on the web, the link will open web version of your content, which is kind of fine niche. 
But we remember, right, that users convert much better in the mobile application, so we still want to drive users to our mobile application. We can add some JavaScript, we can add some magic, and navigate user to the proper app store. Like when the user clicks the link, we can check, like, okay, that's Android, let's redirect user to the Google Play. And he's going to install application, but again, the context will be lost, because after the installation, where the data is going to appear. And that's where the context concept of deferred deep linking came from. Deferred deep linking solves the problem where application was not installed, and we want to pass the data from the moment we click the link and up to the link itself, even if there was installation process in between. So now you know basic concepts. We remember we had URI schemes that had tons of problems, then we had uplinks and universal links that solved most problems but didn't work well with when application is not installed, and finally we have deferred deep links that are kind of a holy grail and solve of our, all of our problems. But where all the misses came from? Oh. First, there is, I found that there is like very shallow understanding, at least from our clients, how you can leverage deep links. And I heard a lot of times, like, we are not an e-commerce company, like, we don't care about deep links, we don't have content to link. And that's true that the most common scenario is linking to the e-commerce. But if you were today on the JAX keynote, you remember that we are living in the multi-platform world. You never know where your application is going to be used, on the web, on the Android device, on iOS. And we have to make sure that our content is equally accessible and equally the, the user experience to get to that content is equally available on all platforms, and the user experience doesn't suffer. Yes, that's true that e-commerce is probably one of the most important and the most like, highly, popul highly like, uh, used the most used example of deep linking. But it's kind of boring, and we all know how to implement that. But think, think for a second, what else you can build if you can get any kind of data from, send, any kind of data from the sender to the receiver, if you can pass any data from one device to another without caring if the application is installed or not. First, driving users from web to application. If you have a mobile website, you can pop up a banner like, hey, user, come to our mobile application, install. If your application is already installed, you can just open the application. But what, and you could do that for a long time, but what deep linking will allow you to do is to keep the context. If, in this example, we were searching something on the Walmart for our favorite TV, and we saw a banner opening the app, we click open the app, maybe it was not installed, we install it, install it, and when we launch the Walmart application on our phone, we are seeing exactly the same search. The user experience is not getting broken. Another idea where you can use is physical web. Like, you know those beacons, like Eddystone beacons that Google, you know, the standards that Google is promoting. You can create a universal link to your application. For instance, I created a link to DroidCon application. I still don't understand why there is no iOS application, but imagine DroidCon has an iOS application. Maybe that's a question of the religion for this conference. You click on the link independently on which device, and the link is going to take you to the App Store if you are on the iOS device, or to the Google Play to, if you are on the Android device. Or even if you are clicking this, this link on the desktop, you can pop up an input field to, to send a message, to, like to send a link to yourself or a QR code. You can come up with any creative solution you want. Now, you can use those universal links for physical web promotions. Another one, personalized onboarding. That's one of my favorite ones. Imagine I have, I'm playing some fantastic games and I want to share with all of you. I, like, we as a developer can give a power to our users to create this universal link, embed all the data about like, 
me, Vitalis Asadne, is playing this amazing game, and I invite you to this game. You click on this link, you install the application, and on the login screen, you're just not just seeing like, a login to play the game. You see, hey, Vitali invited you to this game. Would you like to play one? Would you like to join Vitali on this game? Just think for a second, like, which screen you're most likely going to pass on to the next stage? In which case you're going to provide your login details if you'll just see the flat screen of login to play the game? Or, hey, Vitaly is inviting you to play the game. Would you like to log in? Login screens are one of the deadly things from the mobile development, and a lot, a lot of users are getting lost on that screen. Deep linking and being able to transfer the data after the installation process, that's where you can get advantage of, over the other applications and get save those, those essential users. And our metrics show that you can improve the onboarding, like the amount of users that cross the login screen if you provide the context why they should log in by 77%. That means that if you had 100 of users getting to the login screen, you can get 77 users more after the login screen if you're going to provide a proper onboarding. One more that Android introduced to us, we all know Android instant apps. And the way how they promote, like you click on the link, instead of loading the full application, we load only part of the application, and guidelines say that, okay, after a user finishes the transaction, the basic transaction, ask user to install the application. But if I was watching something on Vimeo, I want to probably continue watching this video in the application itself. But Android as a platform do not provide ability to provide information, like to pass information about what video was played after the installation process. And deep links again can help you with that. You can provide, you can not just set the link to the market below this button, but you can put a deep link that is going to carry information over the installation process and when the application will be opened for the first time, get the data from this deep link and open the same video on the first launch. Okay, let's move on. Another one, app indexing. It was introduced in, by Google on one of the Google IOs, but app links is one, it's the essential, like, it's basically the only way if you want to expose content if it's available only in your application. And app indexing slowly migrated to Firebase indexing that allows you to expose content to Android as a system later on. And I can continue this list on and on. There are like tons and tons of use cases, how you can use deep links. So remember, like, we are living in the hugely multi-platform world. And our goal is to provide this consistent user experience between transitions between Android, iOS, and web. And smart links can be your Swiss knife, your tool of trade that is going to provide you the smooth experience for your users. So deep links are everywhere. Let's just deal with that and slowly move on. Also, I often hear that App links are enough, or universal links are enough if we are talking about iOS. But you probably already got it that it's not actually true. Yes, we have app links that can provide a nice user experience when application is installed. But if application is not installed and we want to solve that problem, we somehow have to figure out what is going to happen here. How to make sure that this transition through app installation is going to be as smooth as possible. And if you want to bring this smooth experience to your developers, uh, to your users, and you want to build this solution on your own, that's more or less what you have to handle. You'll have to build some redirection logic of detecting the platform and deciding should I redirect user to the Google Play URL, should I redirect user to the App Store URL. And in some cases, you will most likely will have to show some landing page for a user or where, he's go, where does he want to go after. Next, you will have to build some temporary data storage because link itself has size limitation. If you want to pass a lot of data, you will have to 
when you create a link, store data somewhere on your backend, generate a unique ID for this set of data, attach it to the link, pass the link, and when the link is opened on the device itself, you have to make a call to your backend to retrieve the data. So you have to build also an API. And slowly, from having only app links, we get to understand that, hey, to provide this user experience, we have to build all this stuff that we didn't think of initially. Like, if you want to get into details, like, how does it actually work? You know, when we create a link on one, one device, we set some data with the ID to our backend. We, on Android, provides us an ability to send referral data together with the link to the App Store, to the Google Play. So we attach this ID to, as a referrer. This referrer is passed to our application on the installation process through install referrer receiver, and then we get this data. And everything would be nice, and we'll be happy if install referrer would be working all the time, as we expect. But the thing is that if you try to pass data via install referrer, you will pretty fast find out that for instance, Facebook is going to replace your referrer with just Facebook as a referrer. And there are like more applications that just hijack this information from you. Secondly, install refer may arrive later. We all know, like, install refer is broadcasted after ins application installation, but there is no guarantee when it's actually going to be broadcasted. Or to make it even worse, Google Play never actually guaranteed that install referral receiver is going to be fired and you're going to get this referral information back. Luckily for us, Google Play kind of fixed the situation and released uh, Google Play, Google Play ins install refer API, which changes the logic from push to pull. Basically, we can request information from Google Play and it makes data like more predictable, it makes it available like in more cases. It's much more reliable now, but still there are chances that where our referral data will be lost, like the first case where it's just being removed by Facebook or other application. And in that case, you have to come up with some other idea how you will pass the information through. So besides all the, what we mentioned, you also have to build some kind of fingerprinting solution that is going to which basically, when you create the link, besides passing the ID and your data to your backend, you also pass the fingerprint of your device. And finger fingerprint can be anything what your privacy policy allows you to get from the device. It can be resolution of the screen, it can be IP address, it can be uh, build numbers, or whatever you have access to. And after the installation, you if you have ID, amazing. If you don't have ID, you collect exactly the same set of data. You send this to your backend, and then you can have to compare all the fingerprints available on, the, on your backend and compare them to return the data. The problem with this approach, with the fingerprinting in general, is that it's not precise. Because if you are taking, if you are lying only on the IP address and resolution and version number and build number, there is a very high chan chance that there are two the exact the same devices, like two iPhone X in the same network with the same public IP address. And there is a chance that you are going to get two exactly the same fingerprints from different devices. So you can't really use fingerprinting in the cases where reliability is essential, like sharing referral code for Uber. They cannot rely on fingerprinting because they're dealing with money, they're dealing with uh, sensitive data, and finger fingerprinting is not reliable enough for that. Second, we all know, or at least like our company suffered a lot from GDPR regulations, and before collecting all this data for fingerprint, you actually have to ask a consent for, from your users that, do you allow us to collect your sensitive data? Like, uh, Google advertisement ID, because it identify like this kind of data is identified as a PPI, like personal identifiable information according to GDPR, and you have to ask consent if you want to use fingerprinting. But to make us feel better, 
we are Android developers. We at least have refer, install refer receiver for our server. iOS doesn't have that. So for iOS, if you are iOS developer, you can say and have some fun with your iOS developers that fingerprinting is the only way to pass the data through the installation process for them. So that's it. You, want, you just wanted to make a nice user experience for your user. And you saw, like, OK, uplinks will be enough. But actually, it's not. And you have to build a bunch of stuff that is like, pretty straightforward how to build. But also, you have this strange thing called fingerprinting that not always works. But in some cases, that's the only way you can go with, like iOS, for instance. And if somebody is going to say you, we want a great UX. We want to drive our users smoothly to our content inside the application. Remember that uplinks is just the tip of the iceberg. And to make the experience like really smooth, really polished, there are a bunch of stuff that you will have to take care about besides uplinks itself. And now we are coming to the part of implementation is straightforward. If you heard my presentation by this point, you get a like, more or less understanding of what you have to do. And if you implement only that, most likely your deep linking or deferred deep linking is going to work in 70% of cases. Maybe not, maybe more, maybe less. It depends how other platforms like Facebook are going to behave. And we have a funny story. Like three years ago when I just joined Get Social. We had a client. They came to us. We did a demo integration for them. They looked into the numbers. They looked in, like we gave them pretty much the same information. They said, like, you know what? We are going to build it on our own. Like, we have nice developers. We have great developers. We have 300 of great developers. And you know what? Two months ago, they came back to us. So like, uh, you know, we looked. We tried. We built the solution. We are getting back. And the thing is that what I described is a happy path of development. If you really want to make it work in all possible scenarios, you have to take care of, about a like, couple of more stuff, like deep, different deep linking standards. If you, are, if you are talking about deep links or just links on the web, it's pretty straightforward. We have link, we open link in any browser, it just works. If you want to implement deep linking on the mobile, it's getting a bit more funny. Like, at least to start with, we have two different platforms, Android and iOS. Then we have URI schemes that were available on Android and iOS, and that they were kind of working everywhere. Then iOS, Apple and Google introduced universal links and uplinks. Then Facebook introduced their own deferred deep linking solutions that in theory, it was working everywhere. And to make it even more fun, Chrome is also has its own deep linking solution that is working only on Android, but it's kind of working. But if you start implementing that, and if you come to this table and will decide like, what I should use for my deep linking, what should I give to my users to open the application and the content that they wanted, you will start checking that, actually, like, your eye schemes are deprecated after iOS 9. You just can't use them. Universal links are av available only from iOS 9. App links are available only for Android 6. Yes, we are coming to the points where we are going to support only Android 6 plus users, but still there are users on the old versions of Android. Facebook links, well, they never actually worked. They released them, then they broke them. They never admitted that they broke them. And now it's like in this uh, limbo state where they are there, documentation is there, but they don't work and nobody is using them. So Facebook uplinks with was very confusing uh, deep linking platform at the moment. And we have Chrome intents that are working only on Android. So when I saw this table for the first time, it was just like, what the hell should I implement? And the truth is that. Again, if you want to make sure that you support any platform and all Androids, all iOS devices, anywhere you provide the same smooth user experience, you have to support everything and 
every single standard, depending on different cases. And talking about cases, this part also can get tricky. Remember I told that from time to time you will have to show a landing page. And if you're lucky enough, you can just say, OK, somebody clicked on the link. We see that this device is on Android. We can just do 301 redirect to the, App Store, uh, to the Google Play. And it, it will work from time to time. But from time to time, you will actually will be requested to render a page, because redirection won't work. And we come to the topic of the edge cases. And here with the edge cases is a funny part. Like, you know about Android browser. Or like you probably heard about Andro like Android browsers are mostly running Chromium. Mostly. But every browser tried to do some improvements to Chromium. And improvements not always work as expected. Like if you will try to open a deep link in the Inter uh, Samsung Internet, like one of the most popular inter internet, like mobile internet browsers, on the old version of Android, you won't be able to open the deep link itself. Like, the best way to redirect users to the application on the Android is Andro uh, Chrome Intent, and Samsung Internet doesn't do not support fallback URL. So if application will be installed, everything is fine. If application is not installed, fallback URL, which is our Google Play link, won't work. Samsung Internet, when they were doing their set of improvements, just broke it. You see browser, one of the most popular browsers in the Asia. They just don't support Chrome Intents at all, even though it's the same Chromium browser. They just decided, that, well, that's probably something not important. Let's just cut this. And users on the old versions of Android won't be able to deep link to your content right away. Opera Mini is my favorite. Yes, they tried to optimize for a market, but they threw away everything. Everything that supports, it provides any kind of reasonable user experience on Opera Mini, you won't be able to deep link, you won't be able to, uh, you won't be even able to open Google Play on the page of your application. The best bet is to do a search query on Google Play. That's the only thing that Opera supports. And again, for this list, I can go on and on. If you're interested, visit this link. I'm going to share a presentation later. There is entire presentation about imp improvements in Android browsers. So that's the edge cases you have to handle. And that's only browsers. Now we are going to talk about social applications. Facebook is number one application used on mobile, like number one. There is no more, uh, most, more popular application than a Facebook. And if you're going to open any deep link on the Facebook or Instagram or Kakao if you are from Asia, it just simply won't open your application. They open an in-app browser that is blocking all deep links to external applications because those applications, they don't want you to leave their platform. Facebook doesn't want to go directly to the YouTube from their news feed. They want to keep you inside application. They build this fortress around their application and keep users as much as possible inside their application. So you have to deal with that kind of cases as, as well. That's actually like most, like if you're going to render landing page, the one that I showed you before, most likely you're going to do it in one of the social apps. And Particularly in our company, when we build our deep linking solution, our testers created this like table that I hate. It's like how our deep links behave on different platforms, different browsers, different social apps. In total, there are like more than 400 different cases of combinations of applications, OS versions, and like, technologies available. 400 test cases that you have to test every single time you release a new version of your platform, or where, when Facebook is releasing a new version of the application, or Twitter is releasing a new version application. Supporting all that is a one whole maintenance hell. I believe by this time I convinced you that building a reliable deep linking solution is not the best idea 
as you can get. I'd really encourage you to focus on your business logic, like focusing on your product, not on the tools that can help you. And if you ask somebody, will tell you like, hey, would you like to build some deep linking solution? It's going to be cool. Don't listen to them. Just use something that is already available on the market. Like if you are using Firebase, because I believe pretty much everybody is using something from Firebase, just use their dynamic links. They are maybe not the most configurable solution, but it works. I like their selling point. It works for all Google applications. It should work for you as well. If you need more advanced deep linking solution like with tons of configurations and like all possible toggles or how your links behave on different platforms, probably you want to go with branch. Branch is like only focused on the deep linking solution, only, only on deep links. That they are only product and they are doing only this and they are doing this good. If you are, need deep links for advertisement, most likely you are going to go with native solution from those like attribution providers or advertisement providers, like Tune or one link from Apps Flyer. And finally, if you want to do something more with your users and connect them in your application after bringing them, maybe you want to use GetSocial. And there are like tons and tons of other providers available. Don't try to build deep linking solution of your own. You have much more important stuff to do. Getting back to the initial statement, we are living in the multi-platform world. We never know where our application will be opened. Android, web, iOS, it can be anything. And we as a developers, we have this power to provide this best user experience. Just imagine for a second how the world wide web, how the internet that we know and use every day will look like without deep links, without URLs. That's more or less how mobile platforms are, going, are looking like without deep links. Even with such a diversified ecosystem with like tons of standards, tons of test cases, tons, tons of edge cases, and this strange deferred deep linking that we have to implement, you have the power to provide the best user experience. Whoops. You have the power to provide the best user experience possible. You don't have to build this solution for your own. Use what is existing on the market. So remember that you have to test for those test cases on your own as well, because not everybody is keeping up with those 400 cases. But you have the power to provide the best user experience, and I believe you are going to do that. Thank you for your attention. My name is Vitaly Zasadny, and I am working for GetSocial.